Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Nick. If you are new here, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and come back here often for lots of different content. If you have been here before, welcome back. I'm hoping that you had or been doing well since the last time we talked. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a longer one because I have six topics that I want to cover regarding the United States of America, things that have happened over the past week that are huge events that are really shaping the future of the country and basically are turning our turning points in our country which I'll explain kind of what each one is and one topic and a couple of topics in here are related to a widespread group of people especially in California but it affects everybody and um, one example I have here one topic is more specific on to just how everything is kind of being turned upside down everything is tipping is, is at a tipping point or we are turning a corner in, in some cases so I wanted to make sure I shared all that with you in one video since they're all kind of intertwined and they all happen this week and they all are kind of connected in a way and and really fall under this umbrella of a turning point in the country and even though um, I'm fixing my hair because it's getting so long. Um, the They may seem like one thing if you're seeing them on the news or being reported on social media, but I wanted to give my take on these topics and put them all in one video. So it's going to be a little bit more of a podcast style. So this will be possibly a little bit longer video than I'm used to making, but I think it's worth it. And if you want to grab a snack, grab a drink, grab something. I have my water here just so I don't <clears throat> get dry mouth and I, remi and I remember to talk appropriately so I have six here listed so it's gonna cover everything from President Trump's social media executive order to the death of George Floyd and the f particularly the fallout from his death uh, a work project that I'm actually working on this is the, one of the more personal things that is just falling right into line of with what is happening in the world right now and the universe is kind of just making it happen in every which way possible. I'm sure you have an example in your life of something that's happening in your personal life that it, it's one of those things you're like, you know what, why wouldn't this happen right now? Even though it doesn't need to happen right now, why Why not? <laughs> and then a, an update on contact tracing programs, especially the one in California and how I may be directly impacted by this and my thoughts on that. And, and actually tagging on to that is the impending pay cuts for state workers in California and my thoughts on that since I I haven't really I don't think talked about this yet on this channel but I am I work for the state of California and I've been I'll mention this later I've been questioning if I should even mention that or even talk about that but at this point since I am employed by a taxpayer funded organization there's nothing that they can really do if I on my own time am sharing my thoughts on what is happening as a taxpayer so I pay taxes so I pay for the thing that I'm working for that's paying me. Anyways, so I'll talk about that. And then lastly, the SpaceX launch that literally moments ago finally took off but had a few delays <laughs> in, in on, was it Thursday? Or no, Wednesday. And now it finally took off. So I wanted to talk about all six of those things. So first let's start with President Trump's executive order basically removing the liability protection of social media companies who are engaging in bias work or censorship on their quote-unquote platforms. Well, here's the thing. They're not really considered platforms anymore under the law. They are considered publishers. So I've been seeing, since I'm using Parler right now, I actually, over the past, I think it was two weeks ago to three weeks ago, I actually deleted my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. And so... I kind of, I'm not saying I saw this come, his, his executive order coming, but I, I saw what was happening. Up to about a few months ago, these social media companies were being, were trying to skirt around the idea of them centering or being biased or having shadow banning or algorithms that favored certain political um, agendas or ideologies over others. And over the past few months, they have blatantly come out and said that they are biased companies and that they are censoring and are willing to take down accounts that are posting about things that they don't agree with politically. And so I, once I saw that happening and I actually saw um, whether you agree with the pandemic 
or pandemic pandemic video that had been circulating on Facebook and was taken down from YouTube, whether you agree with it or not, it was right when I was about to delete my account, it was when it went really viral on Facebook, like truly viral, not this like fake paid for viral. And I saw what was happening and I saw people that I had been friends with for a long time who were asleep waking up to what is what what is really happening, which is Yes, the virus is real, but the reaction to it and the response to it by governments, by elected officials, by even people who um, saw this as an opportunity to advance their agenda, were waking up and seeing what was really happening. And I saw people being adamant that this is what was really happening. And then I saw, of course, the other side of people kind of hitting back or pushing back on that narrative. When I saw that happening, and I, I coupled with like the days leading up to that, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all, and YouTube at this point, all rallying to kind of prevent mis misinformation or all these other hate speech type lingo that they try to do to try to control the narrative. I was like, okay, it's time for me to get out. They <laughs> are going to implode on themselves. And I would rather be the one that kind of just gets the ball rolling and leaves them to kind of self-destruct at this point. So that's what, what my story was in leaving these companies. What has happened since then is now that they don't have legal uh, protection under the law to meaning they, they can't get sued for what's posted on their platforms, now they're going to have lawsuits, lawsuits, lawsuits up the wazoo from people who find Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, big tech in general liable for what is posted on their platforms because they're not platforms anymore. So what that means is and I watch um, the Jimmy Dore show who I don't necessarily agree with everything he says, but I like the way he thinks and how he doesn't just automatically support a certain side because it fits his narrative. He questions things. He's critical and he's willing to even question his own side, which is something I respect and something that I try to do when I feel it's necessary. And so on his show, he actually did a, a really good clip on it and he was talking about how yeah, now we can basically sue Twitter or sue Instagram, sue Facebook for allowing or for saying something is true or not true when it may not be, may not actually be that. That's where this whole fact checking thing came into play with President Trump's tweets, which kind of got the ball rolling on this, where he tweeted about uh, mail in ballots for voting in America and particularly in California, which is the state I'm in. And Twitter put a fact check under there from CNN. CNN has been losing a lot of credibility recently, so that even made it worse at this point. And what happened was, is it brought up a really good point. And this is the point that I think is really important for people to understand, and especially these companies that now are gonna be dealing with the wrath of lawsuits and the legal challenges that they have put themselves in. So when they started censoring President Trump's tweet and then a subsequent tweet from the White House, what they did was is they fact-checked it, right? Or they said it went against their terms of, of, of service or whatever. The problem is if they start doing that to only certain tweets, meaning they can't get to every single one, which I would imagine it's almost impossible even with an algorithm and a robot doing it to get to that because you can disguise things really easily, right? The problem is when you, let's say you label President Trump's tweet as dangerous or as fact-checked as incorrect, when you go and find another tweet that basically says the same thing and it's not fact checked by Twitter, what they're basically they're basically co-signing on it saying since we didn't fact check it, we're saying it's true. So what that's the legal challenge that Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all these other platforms that have social media or have a, p a publishing option for people, it that's the problem that they're about to face is if they don't fact check everything and they're correct on every single thing, which I don't know how you would be, I don't know how anybody would be, you can sue them. Basically, let's say I, I, put, a uh, I put a tweet out, even though I don't have Twitter anymore, saying something like, something outrageous, let's just say whatever, think of something outrageous, and I think I'm correct, maybe it's an opinion, maybe it's whatever, and Twitter fact checks it underneath my tweet with a link to an article debunking what I've said and then someone else says the same thing I did but that one isn't 
isn't fact checked or anything i can sue twitter saying that they are politically coming at me or they're being biased to me and they're being discriminatory towards me but the thing i think that is interesting here is technically in twitter's terms of service they basically have a line in there you can look this up is they can disable your account they can delete your account they can alter it whatever for any reason that's in their terms of service so when you sign up for twitter or any other company and you agree to their terms of service you're basically giving them permission to treat you any way they want you to if it says that in their terms of service so that's where i think they might actually get out of this but here's the thing and the last part last point i want to make on this is at the end of the day they have to face the people and the users of their of their platform right so let's say they do have that in their terms of service to treat you whatever way you want you have every right to delete your account and move to a different platform that is what i think is going to happen and should happen let the consumers let the free market let the really influential people on twitter be the ones to start the movement away from twitter and so i want to point you to actually a website that is helping in this if you're someone who is on those platforms and you're starting to really not like it or anything it's twexit.com t-w-e-x-i-t.com and that's kind of the the website that will help you learn more and just kind of help you maybe get out of twitter or some of these companies that you're um, finding less and less in agreement with especially since now they can basically do whatever they want under their terms of service if you agree to them so anyways that was one of the big things that happened this week, and it might be might go down as one of the biggest decisions that President Trump has made so far because it's a, the first domino to fall in antitrust lawsuits and and people moving to different platforms, which will increase competition and actually could lead to the not necessarily the downfall of the death of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and and the like, but definitely their power in society and their um, listing on the stock market because their their shares are down. And even though Twitter's um, market market value isn't even a fraction of Facebook's, uh, I think it'll start the, the ball rolling on these companies being held liable and even maybe being broken up or being um, mass exited from, if you, if you will. So that's my thoughts on that. Speaking of media... We have George Floyd, his death, and the fallout and reaction from his death at the hands, literally, and and feet and knees, of a Minneapolis, Minnesota police officer. So what we are finding is, so first let's talk about the fallout. So it started as protests and turned into riots and now basically anarchy in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and now it is spreading to a lot of the bigger cities in the United States, from New York to Los Angeles to, I think I've seen Bakersfield, San Jose, and California, probably San Francisco's next. Atlanta I've seen, even in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and a lot of places are, I think St. Paul, Minnesota is, is a problem now. And, um, God, my hair is freaking annoying me. <laughs> it's so long. I'm gonna have to deal with it. That's another story, but, um, lots, and I think even Texas, they were, they were showing some things, and, so what is happening um, is I haven't seen really anybody saying that George Floyd deserved to die. What I have seen is people not only taking advantage of the situation as a reason to completely riot and completely start destroying property and go completely anarchist on, on the country, I forgot to mention Washington D.C. at the White House. There was another protest there, but luckily they were they're pretty fortified there. If you if you if, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so what I was gonna say was, um, God, I'm, why did I lose my train of thought? So people are taking advantage of the situation. Now these are not confirmed reports, but what I've been seeing is, and I've been seeing it from people who say they have very very trusted sources saying this is that. Protesters are being flown in from other states, or not protesters, rioters and organized, basically, domestic terrorist groups are being flown from parts of the country 
to these bigger cities to basically wreak havoc and allegedly are being paid hourly what i've seen is 20 hour 20 dollars an hour with bonuses if they destroy property and another bonus if they get jailed and stay the night and a certain phone number you can call that will bail you out so this is what i think is going to be the next big story is who is behind all these organized protests whether it's antifa and well it is antifa and whoever is funding them and helping them coordinate because these these organizations are not like some backyard garage organizations these guys have military style communication you can there's pictures you can look up online of them having the earpiece with like the the um like rubber like thing that kind of goes to a back usually a backpack and they're all in black with some kind of radio signal that's going to like a vehicle with antennas on it um they have really sophisticated face coverings to make sure they can breathe in case there's tear gas or anything happening um they are not playing around and they are organized crime and they should be labeled as domestic terrorists in in the united states and we've we're seeing that now so what i think is going to happen is we're going to see these organizations be exposed and be the first to kind of fall in the dominoes that are supposed to fall for getting rid of the corruption in america and so i wanted to make sure i mentioned um that so another thing that was interesting is they were targeting um Police precincts were being burned in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and now, last night, the CNN headquarters in Atlanta was being almost base, basically taken over. They, The rioters were able to break the glass of the front door, and there was riot police inside the CNN building as they were broadcasting live and, and showing it. So, um, I thought that was very, very interesting. So here's another part of the story that hasn't been widely reported that I've been seeing floating around social media, and that is what is actually happening with the situation regarding George Floyd. Um, the first thing is I was sent a video that was posted on Twitter that allegedly is George Floyd talking about the statistic of most black men or black people being killed are being killed by other black people, not by police. Also, I was sent a stat that showed that actually more white people are killed by police force in America every year than even black and Hispanic people combined. Now, of course, you can argue that per capita, that's probably not an accurate comparison, but usually that is the argument that is stated with these people is they say black men are being or black people are being killed disproportionately. Or they're saying more black men or more black people are being killed when the statistics don't really show that and so i thought that was very interesting and that can lead to, to a whole line of why black people are a smaller percentage of the population there's statistics showing that they are more they use abortion or they're they abort more babies in the black community than any other community which could be the reason why they are still a smaller percentage of the population there's the idea of, of course, them killing each other, um, poverty, love, all, all the things, right? And more susceptible to certain diseases. There's a lot of things that can be attributed to the reason why they haven't gained in percentage or they aren't at a higher percentage of the population. I'm not going to touch on most of that right now, but I wanted to share that first part of the George Floyd situation. The second part that I actually have seen come up is that the relationship between George Floyd and the officer that killed him is not a, a random thing, not a random guy he found on, on the street that decided to arrest or whatever and subsequently kill, who, by the way, he has been charged with third, second degree murder, I think, yeah, second degree or third degree, maybe. One of the degrees where it was like unintentional murder, I think, or not realizing they can murder them, I'm not sure, um, but that's not really what I'm talking about here. But if, if this is true, then it changes the whole dynamic, right? So what's being broadcasts on in the media is the idea that a, a white officer killed a black man what they don't talk about if this is allegedly if this is what is really happening allegedly the officer and george floyd worked to work security together at a nightclub in the area 
And the other fact is that the other officers that were with the one officer that actually was the one that killed George Floyd with without a gun, by the way, were all non-white. So, the question I have is, will all the officers be charged with murder or accessories to murder? Or will it just be the white guy that actually did the killing? And my other question is, was George Floyd targeted? Or was this a personal attack, meaning the officer who used to work security with George Floyd had a personal vendetta against him or a personal falling out that resulted in this happening? And the accessories to murder actually don't fit the narrative. So I'm interested to see how this plays out because at some point the truth is going to come out. And will that make it worse or will it make it better? I don't know. Because it, all of that, if that is true, completely goes against the narrative of the media, which may be why they may be part of the, the writing or inciting the violence and inciting the violence against their own news headquarters, which CNN was the first to really stoke the flames even more by having a reporter be arrested on live TV yesterday morning. I have my suspicions on if that was real or not. Um, even if it wasn't real, it was dumb of them to be inside a police um, perimeter where the person next to them literally got arrested two seconds before they were all, the, the cameraman and the crew were arrested. And they were trying to, after they got released, they were trying to spin it as, oh, we had another crew a few blocks away and they didn't get arrested. Well, that's the thing. They were a few blocks away because they weren't in the perimeter and that's probably why they didn't get arrested. I tried to spin it on a racial thing because the, the reporter that was on live TV was black. But they didn't talk about that his whole crew was non-black and they all got arrested too. So if it was racial, they wouldn't have arrested the rest of the crew. They would have let them walk out. So there's that. So who knows if that was staged or not, but it definitely didn't help. And so now people are destroying CNN headquarters. Another um, theory that I saw floating around that it's not confirmed is that potentially the people, the person funding, potentially the person funding these Antifa domestic terrorists is George Soros and the companies that he owns that are kind of covers for funding these, these groups. And the theory is that George Soros actually funds a lot of what is considered fake news in the United States of America, whether it's CNN, MSNBC, NBC, NBC, CBS, ABC, even, I mean, Fox News, I guess at this point, is even potentially part of it as kind of like controlled opposition, which may be contributing to them destroying CNN because CNN, out of all of them, is doing the worst and has been falling in ratings and in profitability for a few years now. Um, and that's with the news of President Trump actually having the ratings going up. So what the theory is, is that George Soros is actually employing these people who he sends other places to cause mayhem to actually destroy the part of his news business or his investments that is actually already going to go under anyway and this was kind of a quick swift way to kind of get rid of them I'm not sure if this is the truth but it could be a symbol from them that um this this news organization is the one that's going to die or get infiltrated or go under first so um, i thought that was an interesting theory that was um, pointed out and thrown out there don't know if that's true but i'm sure if we start finding more and more out um we will see if that's true or not. So I wanted to make sure I talked about the George Floyd situation and some of the things that haven't really been talked about a lot that could allegedly could be true and just aren't really widespread knowledge because it goes against the mainstream narrative. Um, I think one last note I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about on this is it seems like that the coronavirus is, is gone and over because clearly people are kind of over and just getting on with their lives. So it seems like the news media and those that control them and even the people who were um, benefiting from the lockdowns and the, the coronavirus um, situation are shifting gears and basically trying to divert us away from that into something else that will divide, it, divide us and hopefully let them conquer us and um, distract us and scare us into staying home like a race race war and inciting violence so 
those are my thoughts on the George Floyd situation, the fallout, and what I really think is happening with that. So it's interesting. Speaking of that, that happened Thursday night and, of course, yesterday. And um, I'll touch on a, few, a little bit of a personal thing to kind of break up the thing, but at work yesterday. So I've been finishing up a few projects. I'm not going to get into too many specifics um, regarding what the projects are. But it's just one of those things where Murphy's Law is literally playing out right in front of us. If you don't know what Murphy's Law is, it basically means anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And that happened yesterday with the project that we're wrapping up. And we thought we were almost done, kind of ready to go to the next stage of things and start moving on. And a wrench threw, got thrown in the plan that was almost impossible for it to even happen and was over something that wasn't really needed to be brought up and could be resolved pretty quickly. So when it happened, my first thing I said was, of course this would happen. Like today, everything's happening. And, and what I'm about to talk about with contact tracing happened yesterday too. It's like this week was just, I think the turning point for the universe was everything kind of that's been random here and there and kind of just like not connected. Everything just kind of met at the end of May, the last week of May, it seems like. And so I thought I wanted to touch on that really quickly because it just it was just a sign of the times, right? Everything that can go wrong will go wrong and is might as well just get it all out of our system right now. Just like the stock market did a few months ago, it kind of just purged itself. That's what's happening this week. So that happened. And speaking of work, contact tracing. So like I said um, at the beginning, I am I work for the state as an engineer. And we got notice of that we may be forced to get reassigned to become contact tracers for the virus in California. And I had heard word that something was happening prior to getting an official letter that they needed five percent or they need 10,000 10, contact tracers in the state of California in order to assist public health officials in different counties, local counties, local local agencies and state agencies um, to ensure that they can stop the spread or slow the spread of the virus. And they said if they do not get 10,000 volunteers that they will be forced to reassign people and that they, the state, the governor has called upon all the departments of the state to identify 5% of their workforce to be contact tracers if not enough volunteers are are acquired or, or identified. And so I got that notice yesterday and I was like, hell no, I am not on board with contact tracers, being one, uh, answering one, talking to one, none of that. If, some, if one of them contacts me, I am not giving them any information because that is my right. <laughs> I don't have to tell them anything. And this the letter that I had, which I think I should grab. Hold on, let me grab it for a second. All right, I grabbed the letter. It was a contact tracer assignment, um, frequently asked questions, and it was referenced by the California Department of Public Health and the California Department of Human Resources, and it was a personnel information bulletin. And the reason I'm able to share this publicly is because I work for a public agency, and um, if they're going to do contact tracing with the public, they need to know. So, um, basically, Governor Newsom launched what's called California Connected, and it's a comprehensive contact tracing program and public awareness campaign. Here's the problem I have. It's being disguised as something that's good for your health, which is what this whole pandemic situation has been has been disguised as, but really, this is about government control, about invading your privacy, about... Um, no longer having control of your own life or your own health or your own decisions and about government control over those things. And so that is why I'm vehemently against this. And I know of a lot of people who are getting ready to lawyer, who are employed by the state, who are getting ready to lawyer up. Um, the one thing I, I'm not going to get too much into this for this, um, this video, but this is the developing situation that I am willing to speak out about. Um, and what I haven't, we haven't heard from our bargaining unit slash, it's not a union, but I just, I'm just going to refer to them as a union for now until I'm able to distinguish the two. Um, basically, it's not a union because we can't, 
strike, but it's a bargaining unit because they're the ones who kind of negotiate with the state our salaries, um, which actually leads me to my next point. But basically, we haven't heard from them yet if they are going to take legal action against the state or if they are in support or not in support of this. I have confirmation that someone um, has gotten a letter saying that they will be ad they are identified as a contact tracer if um, none of the volunteers have been identified. So that leads me to speaking of bargaining unit slash union um, that the governor Gavin Newsom has stated that there will be cuts to the budget for the fiscal year of 2020 2021 which starts July from July 2020 to July 2021 and that's in the process of being approved by the state legislator and it was being thrown around that state workers would have to take a 10 percent pay cut and I have not had confirmation of this yet but it'll be interesting to see what happens or maybe furlough days if, if that's kind of what's happened but I'm, I'm pretty sure the bargaining unit slash unions are being um, are in talks with the governor and legislators on reaching a deal and I will share more about what I think about that coming up and kind of what I'm doing about it very soon so stay tuned make sure to before I talk about my last subject if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to my channel turn on post notifications and if you to make sure you and come back here often because I'm going to be sharing developments as I get them because I think it's important for people to know because what happens in California is usually the precursor to what is happening in the rest of the state or the rest of the United States and as we know the United States is kind of where everyone turns to for what's going to happen next in the world because we are the leaders whether you like it or not so I wanted to make sure since I'm kind of in, in the epicenter of this to keep the public informed and my last thing I kind of want to end on a positive note even though it started off as a negative right the SpaceX launch from American soil of the the Crew Dragon launch, and that was supposed to happen on Wednesday, and we were watching live, and the weather was the last thing that kind of scrubbed it, meaning it got delayed, and, and it was going to happen today, which is a good thing. I mean, that's the only thing that they can't control, right? So it happened, like, literally an hour and a half ago. The, the, um, the rocket launched with a crew on board, and they seem to be on a safe journey to the International Space Station, which they will end up being welcomed tomorrow, and then hopefully they have a safe return back home. But I thought it was one of the things I wanted to add on here because it was part of this week's crazy events that, of course, would go wrong. And it was just interesting, an interesting sight watching this launch because I watched replays of, of other SpaceX launches where all the employees were gathered outside of the control room and we're celebrating when things went well and people inside were all kind of interacting with each other making sure everything was good in this instance the people who were showing the or doing the live stream where they were um, broadcasting they were all separated like six feet six feet apart even interviews with um, elon musk and other and the nasa administrator were six feet apart the control room all had masks on and there was no one standing outside the glass cheering them on so i thought that was just an interesting i guess the word dichotomy or irony is that all this is happening in the world but we are literally taking humans and launching them into space out, outside of this planet so with everything going on here on the ground and, and on earth it's crazy and i'm really cool to know that that's the future is launching to space, getting more humans up there, and a, and a rocket returning to do another mission. So I wanted to end on that note. Let me know what you think of all of this going on. I know this was kind of a longer video, um, not as long as I thought it was going to be. Whether it's your thoughts on the executive order by President Trump, the George Floyd situation and the fallout, uh, anything in your life that may be going wrong that you never thought would, that of course would now because everything's kind of up in the air um, your thoughts on contact tracing or pay cuts um, from governments that have had decreased uh, income to pay their workers because of the lockdowns and stay-at-home orders and then finally the spacex launch let me know what you think before you leave make sure to give this video a thumbs up of course subscribe like i said and i cannot wait to see you back here and i hope you have a great rest of your day and if i don't see you in for a little bit then I hope you're well until the next time we talk, but I hope to talk here very soon. All right.
with that said, thank you so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.